My name is Geraldine Lee. My practice is in Santa Ana, California. Um, but um, I think that the laws in California are quite similar to laws in other states. And um, I've been doing this for about 26 years. I have 26 years worth of information in my head um, that I'm going to try and share with you all within like 15 to 20 minutes. Obviously, please. Um, text or, or post your questions, and I will try and save a little bit of time um, at the end so we can answer them. Um, many of you are stuck in a workers' compensation system, whether in California or in a different state, and you will know firsthand that it sucks. I'm sorry, I can't even mince my words there. Um, it is a horrible, horrible system. It is supposed to get an injured worker healthy and back to work, but because of all the delays in the system, it doesn't. If you were to have gotten injured um, on your own in front of your house and stepped off the curb and broke your ankle, you would probably be healed within, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks, in the California workers' comp system, it would be six, six months to eight months. And if you have complications from that broken ankle, such as CRPS, it may even be years before your workers' comp case is, is resolved. So caveat, it is not a great system. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a, an introduction to it. Feel free to email me. That is my website. I have received a couple of emails from other CRPS forum members. Um, so thank you out there in Missouri. You've emailed me before. Um, and I will try and answer your questions as generally as I can since I don't practice in those states. Um, all right. So first, you have to have an injury uh, to um, be able to qualify for workers' comp, and that injury has to occur during work. So, um, you know, the easier cases are the ones that are like you tripped and fell over a cord, uh, you were at a job work site, and you fell off a ladder. That's pretty easy. Um, it can't be something that you're doing personally, like um, on your lunch break at the office, you're putting together, you know, um, a wooden uh, frame and you hammer your finger. That obviously is not workers' comp. Or, you know, if, um, and this has happened before at big warehouses, like on breaks, you know, a couple people were skateboarding inside the warehouse, huh? And then they got hurt. So obviously that is not a workers' comp case because that is horse playing and it's not benefiting the employer. The coming and going rule is a little bit funky. Um, that means if you're going to work or you're coming from work, um, it is not considered a worker's compensation claim um, because you're leaving or you're coming. However, there are some exceptions and it gets a little bit tricky here. Um, if let's say there is a designated parking lot that you are supposed to park at and you do, and then you walk from the parking lot to the office and you trip and you fall, then it is considered workers comp. I have a case right now where my client works at a very small local market in a very small town and they don't want to use all the parking that is in front of the market for their employees to park. So they tell them to park at a, a lot that's a little farther away. And there are lots of um, potholes and uneven asphalt. And as a result, she fell and sustained a pretty serious injury. So that would be considered workers comp because there's a designated parking lot for employees. Now, what about if you're driving home from work and your boss says, hey, can you go to the post office for me? Um, then that's considered running an errand. So from the time you leave the office to the time the errand is complete, that is still considered workers comp because it's still considered during work. Um, it also, now if it doesn't happen at work or during work or at the place of employment, it could also be in the course and scope of employment. A lot of people have to travel for their jobs. One of my clients, um, flies a lot to go to different work, uh, work sites. And while he was on the plane, um, some other traveler's bag fell on his shoulder and he sustained a pretty bad injury. So 
that is considered its course and scope of employment or as a result of employment. Um, it also gets tricky if you sustained a stroke or a heart attack. Obviously, it's hard to determine whether the stroke or the heart attack was caused by work. There are some exceptions such as um, law enforcement, probation officers, firefighters, if they do have those types of cardiovascular diseases or injuries or cancer, it is presumed to be as a result of employment. But for most of us, it isn't unless you have such a super stressful job and we can prove that it's stressful and you had a heart attack because of that then of course it is as a result of employment. I put bug bite here as a really interesting case that I had. Um, my clients got a bug bite and had a very, very serious type of injury as a result of the bug bite. And she said, I swear it's from work. And it turned out that this, wet, this work site had some funky type of bug that was at this website and then she did get bitten and we were able to prove that it was work related. Also, um, death cases are can be considered uh, workers comp cases if we can trace the um, cause of death to be work related or if the death occurred as a result of the treatment that they were getting. So that's what will trigger a workers' comp case? So let's talk about the types of injuries um, that you can sustain as a workers' comp claim. First is specific. That's really easy. You trip, you fall, you break your ankle. Okay, that's a specific type of injury. Um, recently, I had a client who fainted at work and she hit her head on the side of her desk and that head injury is a specific type of injury. I'm having a hard time proving that her fainting was caused by the stress. So that's an issue that we're battling right now, but I don't have to battle the fact that she hit her head because that actually occurred in her office at her desk and that is workers comp. Continuous or cumulative trauma, that's a little bit more difficult. Now, let's say you've got a type of job and you're typing, typing, typing all the time and you go home and sometimes your hands or wrists are sore, but you haven't linked it to all the typing that you're doing. And you go to your personal doctor, your pri uh, primary care physician, your doctor says, oh, well, what do you do for work? Oh, I enter data. Oh, well, it's that's because of your work. So that would be a continuous or cumulative type of trauma. And there's a statute of limitations in California. It's one year to report the injury. It's not to file a lawsuit or a claim. You have to report the injury within one year. So as soon as your primary doctor says, ah, your work, your wrist injury is related to your job, that starts the one year clock to tick. And you better tell a HR person, a supervisor, not just a coworker, you know, not your friend that you have lunch with from the other department. You have to tell someone that's above you that you are going to file a workers' compensation claim or make a claim for a type of injury. Now there is a direct injury. So using the trip and fall, you can just, you could fall, you break your ankle. That is a direct injury, but related to that direct injury is a compensable consequence. So because you've broken your left ankle, now you're always on your right leg and you know, you're stepping out of a, a chair on your right leg, you're stepping out of the car with your right leg, and you're using your other limb, your other extremity more, and it causes another type of injury, that's called a compensable consequence injury. That is an injury due to overuse of the extremity that you're not able to use. Um, we see that a lot with um, lower extremities, upper extremities. Also, CRPS is a compensable consequence type of injury. Of course, your doctor is going to have to say that, but legally, I make that claim because if you break your ankle and it's not getting better and it's been stuck in a boot and next thing you know, you're starting to get the symptoms of CRPS, that 
is an individual distinct type of injury that you have to report on the, the claim with the employer. Um, sometimes my clients undergo medical procedures and sometimes it doesn't turn out so great or they're having other issues from that medical procedure. That's also a compensable consequence. So the most important thing is report it as soon as you know, and you don't have to be a doctor. You just have to be a historian. You're going to tell, tell somebody, hey, my, my left leg is hurting now. Hey, my other right, uh, my other arm is hurting right now. So you're going to have to tell somebody. All right. Um, in California, CRPS is a separate and rateable injury. Um, for the doctors that are on, um, you'll know the AMA guidelines. It's the green book. Everyone has to use the green book um, to rate workers' compensation personal uh, permanent disabilities. And CRPS is mentioned in three different chapters, maybe even more. Um, I rate the reports um, after the doctors give them to me. So these are the chapters that I'm finding and if the doctors cite to them, that's what I'm looking for. But the point is this, it is a separate and distinct and rateable injury. It is not something that piggybacks to another injury, such as pain. There's a chapter on pain and you can rate pain as it relates to your, your cervical injury. This is not it. CRPS is a separate rateable injury. It's very important. It's a very distinct injury and it's a very serious injury. Um, and again, report every symptom and that is to your doctor. Okay, sometimes you don't even know that you have CRPS. I know that on this forum, you all have been diagnosed with CRPS, but I tell my clients, you're not the doctor, okay? And you're not the attorney, but all you have to do is tell us, tell us what's going on. So um, when I had my very first CRPS workers comp case, my client, didn't know what was going on with her. She would feel the wind blow on the hair follicles and just scream in pain. And this was about 15 years ago when, you know, CRPS was just being recognized. It was more fibromyalgia and RSD and no one really knew about CRPS at that time. So we had to find her a doctor that actually recognized that she was suffering from CRPS. And um, we were all learning together and I was open to it because I didn't know what that was, but she seriously, she was seriously suffering from something that was other than her broken ankle. So it's really important to find attorneys who are also familiar with CRPS. And um, I did get a few emails from um, our CRPS forum friends um, that were asking me about their, you know, finding another attorney. And there are state bars in um, each of the states that will have um, specialists, workers' comp specialists, that will be able to help you and you can interview them, ask them, do you know anything about CRPS? I had somebody who did ask me, do you know anything about CRPS? And I said, yes, I actually do. So um, yeah, interview your doctors, interview your attorneys. All right, so let me see here, let me get back to this. Um, all right, the benefits that you are entitled to when you file a workers' compensation claim. So. In California, these your when you file a workers' compensation claim, you're entitled to medical treatment. That's very important. And you have to be the squeaky wheel in a California workers' compensation system. That means you don't get a check, you have to call. You have to start calling. You call every single day, you call the adjuster. If you have an attorney, you let your attorney know and hopefully your attorney is going to be that aggressive. Uh, temporary disability is when you cannot work as a result of your work injuries. That's the time that your doctor has told you to completely take off of work because you need time to heal. That's called temporary total disability. If you can work partially, then it's temporary partial disability until the doctor has given you all the treatment that he or she believes that you. Um, 
you could use to get as good as you're going to get. That is a term that is called permanent and stationary. We'll get to that in a second. Um, a lot of times, once you file a workers' compensation claim, the employer will um, have 90 days to investigate, and they're entitled to investigate. The Workers' Compensation Labor Code allows an employer 90 days. So what are they looking for at that time? How did the injury occur? They're going to interview some employees that were there, maybe the foreperson at the job site, maybe look at some medical records to see what your medical records say. So I always tell my clients, as soon as you are injured and your doctor has put you on some sort of disability, either temporary total or temporary partial, go and file an EDD claim. EDD is the Employment Development Department that's in California. There are two types of claims that you can file with EDD. One is disability and one is unemployment. Do not get those mixed up. Disability, unemployment. If you file for an unemployment case, EDD unemployment, and you are on workers' comp, then you've just committed fraud because EDD unemployment says that you are ready, willing, and able to work when you sign that application and you're not unemployed, you're disabled. So make sure you file for EDD disability. The process takes about two to three weeks. So that's why as soon as you are injured and as soon as that doctor has put you off of work, go and file for EDD disability. Once the employer and the insurance company from the employer begins to pay you temporary disability, you must stop the EDD benefits. Otherwise, you're getting double paid and EDD will want their money back. Okay, so once you get your money from the insurance company, you have to call EDD or email them, send, send the check back and say, all right, I'm getting money from um, the employer. Uh, I don't need EDD for now. Let's say the employer does start to pay you from the beginning. Do you still have to file for EDD? I say yes, because temporary disability in California only lasts for two years. That's 104 weeks. What if you have a disability, especially with CRPS, that lasts more than 104 weeks? Then what are you going to live off of after that? Nothing. So you better fall back on EDD disability. So go ahead and file EDD disability as soon as you're injured and your doctor puts you out for work. And that is the same with social security disability income or insurance. Um, that you need to file for as soon as you're injured and your doctor puts you on disability. SSDI is the same thing. Um, you should report to SSDI any other uh, compensation that you receive so that they, uh, adjust the amount that you're going to get, okay? Now, when your doctor declares you as permanent and stationary, that means you are as good as you're going to get. Um, you don't have to undergo the five other surgeries that you may need in the future to be at that stage. You're just as good as you're going to get for now and you don't want to have any other surgeries. Then the workers comp should start paying you permanent disability advances until your case is settled. How much is that? It's peanuts. You can't even buy Starbucks and gas with what you get for permanent disability. It's $290 a week. And it doesn't matter if it's me or you or the governor, we all get $290 a week for permanent disability. So save your money even when you're on TTD, which is a third or two thirds of what you're usually paid. I know it's gonna be tight, but you should make sure that you're aware that at the moment that the doctor says you are as good as you're going to get, which is maximum medical improvement or permanent and stationary, those TTD amounts will drop down to $290 a week. That's really tough. Um, so you could settle a worker's comp case. Um, I love to settle my clients' cases because I'd rather that they have the money in their hand to go get the treatment that they need. And it's the treatment with these esteemed doctors that are presenting this weekend. 
If you're in the workers' comp system, you are only allowed to treat with the doctors that are in the workers' comp system for your particular employer and the insurance company. So sometimes the best of the best are not in there. Sometimes you're going to have one doctor to choose from, and those that doctor may not be very good at treating CRPS. So my goal is to get the settlement money so that you can go get that treatment. And that settlement includes permanent disability, whatever percentage the doctor says at the end when you are as good as you're going to get. The settlement also includes future medical care. That's why it's so important to report every type of sim symptom that you have because it will increase your future medical care to cure that injury and that condition because of that symptom. Because of CRPS, a lot of my clients also need home health care or transportation, and we need to include that in the settlement of the case. And then in California, you get something called a supplemental job displacement benefit. All it is is a retraining voucher. It is not worth any sort of money. It is a value of $6,000 so that you can use it to be trained for something else. Um, and just like our prior speaker, where we're talking about different types of jobs, maybe if you had a, um, a job that wasn't very sedentary, and now because of CRPS, you can't stand on your feet, you can't move around, you can't run from one cash register to the other cash register, and now you have to do something else, this retraining voucher is very important. And the tools that I use for settlement are of course the reports. The doctor's reports are important. That's why you have to find a doctor who knows what they're talking about. CRPS is very, very unique. And if you get a primary does not know all the different recommendations for your future medical care for CRPS, then you just undervalued the case with that doctor's report. And I can't make stuff up as an attorney. I cannot insert medical care that you're going to need that has to be in a doctor's report. So the PQME is a panel doctor, AME is an agreed doctor, your PTP is your primary treating physician. Those reports are very important. We also utilize nurse evaluations. We will send a nurse out to your house to see, is this house, is your home um, conducive to you moving around if you have now a walker or now you have to use a scooter because of your CRPS. So we will get nurses to go out and evaluate your home, um, ramps if you need the scooter, your car, and then a life care plan. How much is all this going to cost? I don't know. So I have to hire a nurse to prepare a life care plan. And that is to calculate all of the different benefits you're going to need, all the future medical care you're going to need. And then lastly, a vocational expert. That's a person who's going to tell me what you can do. Maybe you can do, maybe you can't do. I don't know. So the vocational expert will be the one who's going to tell us what it is that you can or cannot do anymore. Um, and that's important because if you can't do something, and you know we need to calculate or we need to figure out if you can't work at all, you've com been completely taken out of the labor market, then your case is going to be a hundred thousand or a hundred percent case. All right, let me get out of that. Okay, so awareness, education and acceptance. Um, it is so important that all of you have participated in this conference and it's important for um, you know, lawyers, doctors to also understand CRPS and how it affects each individual and what is necessary for the treatment of CRPS. Um, and I've learned a lot. Um, I tried to teach my colleagues about it. Um, I'm also a personal injury attorney, and um, a lot of the personal injury attorneys are finally recognizing CRPS and how it is a distinct injury and the value that CRPS has on these cases. That is my website. Um, you can go to my website. Um, you can email me or simply email me at Geraldine. It's just my first name, Geraldine 
at Geraldine Lee dash law. Um, and that is my personal email and I will answer all the questions you have as well as I can. Um, and if it's in a different state, then I'll do it generally. Um, but at least hopefully I can direct you in the right direction.